You say goodbye, but we're not through. No, we're not. It is Andorra Susanna Georgie. <laughs> Hello, thank you for chatting with us. Thanks to you guys. Thank you so much, darling. We've got to tell everyone, you know, 2009 Eurovision, it was Andorra's last time singing at the song contest. And you had the honor of being that singer on stage. I'm gonna get a life, the kind that's made for two. that experience like for you oh, it was it was amazing it was amazing but at the same time it was a bit nerve-wracking because it was all on my shoulders I was told that if we pa if we don't pass to the final Andorra won't come back oh no so at the same time yeah that was a bit terrible <laughs> but you know I tried to block that out for a bit and and in the stage was just unbelievable like one of the biggest of the Eurovision history wasn't it so so that was quite amazing and that's a lot of pressure because smaller countries, microstates, seem to have a harder time making the final. I think Andorra is the only country that's never made the final, actually. Um, so. <laughs> did you think it was fair that participation was dependent on whether you made the final or not? Well, it was a reality. Mm. I, I couldn't say if it was fair or not fair. Already when I was, uh, like, when I won the Eurovision, I was told that that was it was the lowest budget in history and I was I had to be willing to go for free wow. um, yeah and as I, I mean I've lived my whole life of life of music so I didn't I didn't never doubt it I was like of course I want to do this also because I'm very so small and I'm really patriotic you know so I really wanted to go and make a good job for my country uh, even though it was for free it didn't matter um, so you can I mean it's not that it was fair or not it was just that we really that was they, they sort of squeezed the last lemon out of the, the lemon, you know, the last juice out of the lemon, and that was that was our year, you know. Uh, so we, it was also, on the other hand, it was also very. We had to fight so much harder, I think, than any other country. Um, so yeah, we did the best we could. And the thing is, in many ways, it was a victory because so many people discovered you, your music, you made lots of fans, people learned about Andorra because many people didn't necessarily know about Andorra. I guess, surely you must take pride in what you did. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's so important, especially all these small countries, uh, to be in the Olympics, uh, in Eurovision, all those places where we can be, you know, the World Cup in football, if they make it, you know. <laughs> I think as far as we can go, that's how far we have to go, always. More than anything, because everybody knows what a UK or Germany or Spain is, but not everybody knows what an Andorra is, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, it is a pride. And what I love about your story is you, of course, were born in Denmark, and then moved to Andorra and have become this ambassador for Andorra. So I want to ask you, first of all, how did you end up in Andorra? And second, what do you want people to know about Andorra? Oh dear. Well, first of all, I ended up in Andorra because um, I had a lot of success singing with my sister. We sold millions of albums with me and mine. And at that point, we flew so much around the world. We were touring so much that it didn't really matter from what country we left. And we always had this dream. We wanted to go to the south where the sun was shining. <laughs> so our initial plan was to go to Spain, to be honest, because, you know, famous, nobody knew what Andorra was. And our mom, she saw a documentary on TV. She said, you know, just two hours from Barcelona, there's a small country called Andorra. You have to see it. It's full of mountains. And we've always had a thing for mountains. If you look at our drawings from when we were little girls, there would be mountains of all of these drawings, you know. So we went there, my sister and I, one weekend, and we fell in love completely. We're like, this is where we have to live. There's no way we're going anywhere else. And this is 25 years ago now. So that's quite, that's quite amazing. And to answer your second question, well, that's it. You know, I think Andorra has everything. We have mountains, so you can ski in the winter with amazing ski slopes. Um, in the summer, it's just so beautiful. Like, so beautiful. Like, the... The mountains, you can go for a picnic, you can go bathe in the lake. and it, There's just so many things to do here. Gosh, are Andorans as laid back and friendly as you are? Because you've been so polite this whole interaction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I 
enjoy they actually are they actually are i i normally say that the, the mountains sometimes make us a bit crazy <laughs> because <laughs> you are in a small tiny state you know where 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 you have mountains all over you know but people are so they're really really friendly we have a lot of famous people living here that just walk on the street nobody bothers them so for me that was also a big thing to come at a place where i could go shopping without fans following me around at that time you know so that was really a relief and it's a, such a it's such a calm country susanna you have lived you have <laughs> lived <laughs> i have if you only knew honey <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we will see more of you living because you have started a campaign to get Andorra back to Eurovision. People can use the hashtags my fight, hashtag we can do this Andorra. Um, and so basically, just to catch people up, you have a plan in action or have been working to help secure funding to get Andorra back. Could you tell us about your plan and what you've been doing? Yes, that's correct. I have been for the last two, three years, I have been fighting i have talked to i don't know how many politicians because as you as you know almost in many countries the tv station is owned by the government at least here it is um so if there is no money on the tv station to do this expense which i can understand it will have to come from the government so i have been with the government minister of culture minister of tourism uh, prime minister i've talked to them all over these years and the government changed uh, almost a year ago, half a year, a year ago. Um, no, half a year ago. And uh, and this is a brand new government, but it's a young government. They're all very liberal people. Like I, I just I just love this government we have right now, and I think it's really good for the country. And I was like, if it ever has to happen, it has to be with this government. So as soon as they came in i started again all over to meet up with everybody <laughs> and i got the same answer there's no money okay uh, which of course is a priority because there's money for whatever you have money for especially in a government um but you know i thought all right with there's no money i'll go out and i'll find the money and that's what i did uh, so seven months ago i presented this to the prime minister with the whole team from the it's from another country from outside the team came over we had a huge meeting also with the tv director um and i'm still basically waiting for them to say something i haven't had a no i haven't had a yes and then the corona came in the middle um but there came a time when i was like listen up i have to i have to make some i have to make some noise about this because if not i need the government to understand that the people are on my side, that the town is on my side, that the Europe is on my side. And with all these interviews and all these people that have contacted me, just with that alone, it's enough, to, it's enough to show them that, hey, I'm not the only one who wants this, you know? And how beautiful if after the corona pandemic, Andorra, you know, participated in this big European show saying, we're here too, we're part of this, you know, community because i do think as awful as the pandemic is it has brought some countries together to share you know knowledge um doctors nurses etc it'd be beautiful to have andorra as part of the story completely and i completely agree with you because we also need some good news we need something that is not death and infection yeah. and all these things so if we could actually go to the origin i think it was something that will bring the country together as well to have something to fight for in a way. And for people who don't know, the expense of Eurovision involves, you know, a participation fee for the country, but then does this also include like, you know, producing a song, travel? Like what does what money is needed for what, I guess? Well, ironically not, it's not that it's not that much money. Uh, we I the year I went was the last year and that was the lowest budget in history. That was 150,000 euros. Okay. Um, which is not a lot if you think of all the publicity you get. I know the country just last week spent 1.8 million euros in commercial of the country only in Spain and in France. And we're talking a 10 second commercial. So obviously my numbers in here doesn't add up, you know. Uh, so I would definitely say if we go to Eurovision again, maybe we would do for two, three hundred thousand euros uh, a commitment on three years. That would be one of the things that I would definitely say, because you can never if we go back one year, we don't go to, to the final. People go, oh, what a fiasco. No, it is not about getting to the final. It's about being there. 
and then if we have some time to get there, we will get to the final, like San Marino did. Absolutely. You know what? 10 second commercial or a three minute performance, you know, with the months of build up, the interviews, the hype, the Googling of Andorra. I mean, Bulgaria, for instance, they, they didn't have a big budget. They ended up coming fourth and second. They hosted Junior Eurovision. Tens of thousands of people visited. The tourist board needs to give them my number. I will talk to them. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it is quite insane when you think of it. But it's very simple. People put their interest in what interests them. Ah. You know, so it, it's quite, if you see it as that, it's quite simple. Um, and I said that in another interview, if you have a politician who loves uh, doing downhill on the bicycle, obviously he will have the World Cup of downhill in Andorra and you'd be like, whoa, you know, everybody needs to sort of fight for what they fight for. So since there is nobody who's doing it in this country and nobody moved a finger for all these years, well, I'm, I'm making this. That's why I always do the hashtag my fight. Yes. <laughs> I'm like fighting for this like nobody. And I have friends that are like, oh, my God, you're turning out to be more Andorran than we've ever been, you know? Like, and it is really for the country. You know, I'm doing this for Andorra. I oh, really my am. gosh. I got chill bumps just now. Susanna Gorgi. Goodness me, Georgie. <laughs> Well, a question, some of my bloggers, I told them I was speaking with you, and I was like, what should I ask her? And they want to know, would Susanna consider singing for Andorra? I would at some time, at some point. Uh, but if, if I got these three years um, and we could get to fight for it, I, honestly, when you sing, there's so much pressure, so much stress, so much rehearsal that you don't have time to do anything else but that and interviews and stuff like that. You really have to be you know, on top of everything as an artist. Um, so my priority right now would rather to be backstage, behind the scene, head of delegation, if I could hopefully have some sort of part in this. So we're sure that we're doing it the right way. Because regardless, this is, this is what I've been doing for the last 30 years. I've been touring, I've been doing promotion, I've been doing CDs, I've been doing TV shows. So I think that it would be very hard to find someone on door with this, profile to do that job so right now i would dedicate my time to that and we have so many you know really good artists anyway so that that, did, that doesn't worry them worry me too much who we get i know we will be great if we you know if we get there so so this is what that will be my main priority right now to make sure this is done right to make sure that this artist will have half a year of promotion in a tons of european countries not just one or two no no it would be have to done the right way, if, if you ask me. This is so selfless. Not only are you trying to do something for the country, you're doing it for the artist, the local artist. <laughs> no, honestly, because you're a very humble woman, I can tell. And I just want to <laughs> hype you because it's so, I think some people would get the wrong impression and say, oh, this is just so she can promote herself. But no, this is about you helping the country and other artists. It's really beautiful, actually. Um, Thank you. So there are <laughs> artists who are willing to go to Eurovision, you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, I got so many, you wouldn't believe this. Since this came out really in the press, I've got so many emails, so many messages, so many on every single social media you can imagine. I get messages and phone calls. And I tell everybody the same that uh, come back to me when it's official. If we get there, please write me again. Songwriters from all over the world have been contacting me. But please contact me again. Please follow the situation because I can't remember all these pieces of people and write them back. I said, but please do come back to me if it's a reality, um, because at, at, at that point, then it will be easier to set up a nice songwriting teams and things like that. We definitely want to go out. That That's at least what I would like to do is to make it very open so that people from all over can send song, really make this something that everybody can be a part of, you know? When you were in Moscow, did you find that people would ask you questions about Andorra? Was there a curiosity about where you were from and who you were representing? There was, and I was surprised how many people did not know about Andorra, you know. Um, that was that was quite shocking, to be honest, because, well, I didn't know it when I came here, but then again, I was 18, you know. I never <laughs> listened in my, my, my school, so in my classes of geography, so I was like lost anyway. But I think um, we definitely need to do much more publicity about Andorra. I really, really think so, because it's a rich country. Uh, there's not a single homeless person here. I'm just saying that wow. for people to understand. Yeah, for people to understand that this is a 
this is a beautiful, peaceful place to bring up your children, to walk on the street without getting robbed. You can still, we have the most amazing walking street with shops of high. It's just, it's just an amazing place. And people, Andorra, many times they say Angola, Andorra, and it's a completely different thing. You know what I mean? Wow. So people don't really know what this is, you know? Did you get any questions that really blew your mind? You were like really shocked. Did I? I? I remember the. <laughs> I remember one thing. I remember when we did the, the press meeting. Uh, Dmitry, he was like a, a Russian. Uh, the host who asked in all those press conferences. Very handsome guy, I must say. <laughs> and he, at, at some point, he's like, I can see in my notes you had a number one hit. And he's, can you sing some? And then I sang Doobie Doop. And he went, Oh my God, this is you. And he went straight up to me with all the press in front and kissed me on my mouth like took me back and I was like <laughs> and this was just like I was surprised because he didn't know that much about me and then suddenly he realized that he's been a fan of me since he was a little boy oh how funny and he just like totally took advantage and that was really really funny I think yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> and very uh, handsome boy. Susanna the the sponsor who you've lined up so they're <laughs> willing to provide the money if the government is willing to accept it good question uh, it's a very good question, and that, and and that's what I'm still waiting for because, I mean, if the money is there, what's what's the what's the excuse not to go? No, um, so that's a little bit of what I'm waiting for the answer. If they really give me a no, there is going to be I'm going to make a rage here, you know, <laughs> because I'm going to be really upset then because there's no excuse whatsoever if the money's there. And I guess you can't reveal the sponsor until everything is official. No, everybody's asking me. I can tell you it's it's a big country from outside Andorra. Um, they're very dedicated. I've, like I said, we've been I've had negotiations. I've been go negotiating with these guys for over a year. And I, call, I called them up like after all this, I could drop the bomb again and then um, and I said, you're still on, right? Because now I'm finally getting all this attention from the whole world. It's like, and they're like, 100%, we're still on. Wow. So, yeah. They, they really want this as bad as I do. That is so lovely. I just have to read this to you. I'm going to get a life, the kind that's made for two. I know there's only one, and I want to live it with you and Zora, Susanna, <laughs> Georgie. <laughs> What a pleasure. Could you take us out by singing a little bit of your Eurovision song? Oh, but of course I could. <laughs> Let's see if it doesn't cut off, okay? Uh, you got to get a life, that's what you say to me. But I would rather die if you're not here with me. I'm gonna get, I can't believe I can't remember the words. I, 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 I know that I'm right. I, I, I. I'm getting the life. I'm on my own only this mind. Oh, bless. You know, this comes on my iPhone all the time. It really does. And I don't oh. skip it. I don't skip it. It's a good one. Thank you. Thank oh. you so much. Susanna, it's been such a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much for your openness, your honesty. We really hope it works out and that you get to be the head of delegation at Eurovision 2021. It would just be amazing. Thank you so much. I really hope so. I hope that in 2021, I will meet you in person and that you will come up to me. We, we did it. Yay. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for all the support. I mean, I know you guys have been really supportive uh, about this and all the Euro fans out there also. I get so much support and it means everything to me. So thank you for that.